well. It's been a year already um, since my children were taken from their dad. Um, and um, um, they're holding them, CPS is holding them due to false allegations. Let's take another call, Cynthia. Let's talk to Vanessa from Northern California. Vanessa, did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? Um, both, if that's okay. Go ahead. I wanted to say how you guys are doing, um, and thank you for your show, Vincent. Um, it really helps a lot. Well, I appreciate that, Vanessa. Thank you for listening, and thank you for calling in today. So what's going on? Well, it's been a year already. Um, since my children were taken from their dad. Um, and um, um, they're holding them, CPS is holding them due to false allegations. And um, what's not, I mean, what I don't get is that the false allegations um, are keeping my children from me, but did I have a, a right to get my children before they... I mean, before they were taken from me because they were taken from their dad. So were you and the dad living together at that time? No, we've been separated for two years. I've been fighting for custody for my children out of court and now in court because he got them taken from um, by CPS. Okay, so what you should do, do you have an attorney that's assigned to you? No, I've, I've already had five um, public defenders that all quit on me. Um, without even a notice to me. They just quit, and I don't even know who my other attorney is. Well, you need to find out who your attorney is, and you need to do this. You need to have a meeting, you know, with the file. You and that attorney should go over everything. You should develop a legal strategy with that attorney, and then you sh you and the attorney should implement that strategy. See, I've tried to do that, and they all tell me that I'm guilty of the false allegations and they just want me to sign over my parental rights. Which okay. I don't think it's fair because the allegations are way out. Like, first of all, the allegation is of my son who is 10 years old. He's 15 now that he was hospitalized for four years um, and was 5150. And they don't even have no evidence of that because I had my son when he was 10. And um, there's no evidence to... Um, to back that up, you know? Well, will you have the right, you and your attorney have the right to make a discovery request and ask mm -hmm. the county and ask the social worker, hey, you know, what documents are you relying on to say that my cl my son was 5150 during a period of time when I had custody of him? Because it's just not true. So that's what okay. you, you and your attorney should be asking for. Okay. Um, well, actually, I'm going to have to self-represent myself. Um, oh, no, no, no. Don't do that. Please, well, Vanessa, please don't do that. I'm, I'm trying, but I did file for discovery mm -hmm. uh, by myself, and um, I, I wrote a declaration to the judge, and I, I filed that in court. I made some police reports, but, um, I mean, I'm not in the position right now to even hire an attorney. Um, and like I said, the public defenders are on CPS's side automatically. just And they're, the attorneys that they do... Um, assign me they're they're for probate they're not even really for family family law which i'm in juvenile dependency court so yeah it's not a family law case it's a juvenile dependency case and you hope that you would get assigned an attorney that you know yeah. has experience in juvenile dependency cases you know knows the law in that area and there's the welfare and institutions code and also the mm -hmm. california rules of court yes i hear this frustration all the time though feeling that the attorney is on CPS's side. And Vince, is there an amount of attorneys that you're allowed to have before they say no more? No. Um, no. There's no law that says that. It's up to the, the discretion of the judge. So if I were Vanessa, I'd ask the judge to assign me one more attorney. 
Okay, and what um what's um lawyer malpractice? Like if they quit on me without, I mean, I had to go to court by myself. I didn't even know that they quit when I was going to hearings. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had to go by myself to court, and yeah. the lawyer wasn't even there. I don't think uh, in California, and I don't know the practice in Fresno County, but I don't think an attorney can just quit without telling you and without giving you the opportunity to get another court-appointed attorney or a private attorney. I've heard that just recently, though, also, that they quit and don't give notice. Yeah, yeah. I, in California, that's not proper. I can't imagine it's proper in any state, but, you know, I'm not sure. Yeah. But in California, that's not the rule. California, you actually have to have uh, the client sign a substitution of attorney and file it, or you have to make a motion to be relieved as the attorney, but, you know, notice is given to the client and the judge makes a decision after finding whether notice is proper or not. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that's just not showing up. I, I'm not sure that that is proper, but, you know, are you sure you're telling me all the facts, Vanessa? Yes, yes, okay. I am. I promise I am. Okay. I'm not leaving nothing out. Okay, Vanessa, give me do me a favor. Give me a call at my office, 888 See if I can help you a little bit more. I have to take a uh, break right now. Uh, this is The Secret, How to Fight CPS and Win. We'll be right back with Cynthia and more calls and more questions. <laughs> 